I will love you by loving me. There is a sense where we can't become powerful with other people until we really love ourselves and deal with some of that under the surface fear and anxiety. Welcome to the Brand New Me Podcast. I'm Frances. And I'm Pam. And we are two women passionate about helping others thrive in life, not just survive. In each episode, we're going to find creative ways to offer hope for your future through our own life experiences. So join us every week as we learn together that we really can be a Brand New Me. We have finished up Brene Brown's book, The Gifts of Imperfection, and Pam and her husband have taught a marriage class, and we thought that we would use some material from that to help us in relationships and, and kind of kick this off. So I'm going to let Pam steer this, but we're going to start today by talking about relationships in general, not just marriage. How do you go from being a powerless person to a powerful person. Relationships affect us all on our journey to be a brand new person, to change things we don't like about ourselves, to become a better person. In the process, we make relationships, we build relationships, and that can have a great effect on our journey to becoming a better person. So Pam, why don't you kick us off with this going from powerless people to powerful people? Sure. We're going to talk a little bit about Danny Silk's book, keep your love on. So when we talk about keep your love on, that doesn't just mean keep your love on with your husband and wife. You know, we have to strive sometimes to keep our love on with our friends, with our children, sometimes even with our pets. (laughs) At least I do. (laughs) Let me just read a quote from the book. And this says, a healthy, lasting relationship can only be built between two people who choose one another And that means choosing friends, because we do choose our friends. Or take full responsibility for that choice. So we're going to talk a a little bit about powerless people. And I'll tell you, it was interesting when we were doing this study, because you don't realize sometimes what a powerless person you are until you start to read about it, and then you think, yeah, I do have that, and it's something I do need to change to become a powerful person. Powerless people is sometimes rooted in something, it's a language that powerless people use. And sometimes they will say things like, I can't do it. Or, oh, do I have to? Or, I'll try. I love that he gives an example. It is about marriage when you're standing at the altar and you're taking your vows. And when the pastor says, will you take this woman to be your wife? And will you love and cherish her? And well, the, and the husband says, well, I'll try. <laughs> so that doesn't usually happen. So powerful people and powerless people have their own kind of language, and you can always tell. I think that powerless people are rooted in fear, fear of sometimes of loss, maybe pain that they've dealt with through their life, maybe even death, abandonment, and uh, many different things. Can you give an example from your own life where you realize you feel powerless and it's rooted in fear? When my husband died, I felt completely powerless mm-hmm. because I took on the premise of, I can't, I can't live by myself. Mm-hmm. I can't do my own bills. I can't take care of this house by myself. I don't know what to do which in turn made me powerless. Of course, most people do feel powerless with the death of a spouse. That's just a given. But you know, you might think back to some kind of pain or trauma 
that you went through as a child that could keep you powerless. That's when you have to make the choice to be powerless or powerful. Did you ever know anyone who always needed people to protect them or to make them happy or take responsibility for their own lives? I've known many people. To think that other than Jesus, you have to have somebody to make you happy because that is not going to happen. We think it's going to happen. People get married on the premise that, oh, I'm going to be so happy when we get married, or, oh, this friendship is awesome, and then disappointment steps in, and you think, well, they didn't make me happy, and then in turn, you become powerless. Here's a quote from his book. This is so good. Powerless people approach relationships as consumers. They are always looking for other people who have resources of love, happiness, joy, and comfort to offer in a relationship to share with them because they don't have any. They subconsciously think, you look so happy. I need some of that happy in my life. We should get together so I can consume all of your happy. (laughs) <laughs> that's why I like you, Pam. <laughs> you, you, you are happy, and I like to consume your happiness. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> but he goes on to say, a powerless person will consume whatever another person will offer up until the life of a once happy, radiant flower has been mown to dirt. If you don't believe me, talk to anyone who has been in a relationship with a powerless person. They will suck you dry if you let them. Oh, wow. Okay, so I can quickly see how we can do this even in marriage, where we really totally do look to each other for our happiness. And if they do something that upsets us, we are suddenly unhappy. And this this is all about learning to take charge of your own emotions and your own feelings and how you're going to manage yourself, right? And that is exactly true. Because what happens, he talks a little bit about triangulation. Have you ever heard that word? Triangulation. What it is, is you have a victim. And so if you're a victim, sometimes if you're powerless, there has to be a bad guy in that. Because you have to have somebody to blame. And so what happens is... Something happens to you, and so they did that to me. They caused that to happen. And then it comes around where you need somebody to come and rescue you. You remain powerless because you're always blaming somebody else for everything that happens in your life. And we all know people who do that. I've done that before. (laughs) you know. And then we want somebody to come swoop in and rescue us out of this terrible thing that we're involved in. Because we don't really want to take responsibility for what happens in our life for the things we do. I'm thinking of something that happened to me in the last year where I had a conversation through email that went south (laughs) real quick and it made me angry. But as I took a couple days to step back and look at it, I realized that there was probably some things I did and said in the conversation that did not help things go well. And so in my journaling, I just journaled where I'm going to take responsibility for this part of what happened, because I see now that if I would have given the person more of a heads up or a preparation or notice, it would have saved them from making me angry. (laughs) Does that make sense? Like I'm learning more and more that it doesn't matter how you got to where you are in a relationship necessarily what matters is what was your part in helping it to get there and that's the part that you can deal with and you can control I think that goes with leadership that's what every good leader does they don't just shove the blame on someone else they look at the situation and say you know here's where I probably could have handled this better Is it possible for a person to be powerful in one area of their life and completely powerless in another? Absolutely. We all have our strengths and weaknesses in so many different areas. And I guess the goal is to to look at herself and say, okay, I am, I'm acting powerless here. There has to be a way around this. And yes, many different areas, because I know myself, I can be really strong in some areas and other areas, oh, I just feel 
like a knife going through me. Like, uh, why can't I deal with this? And so I know if you're out there thinking, yes, there's there's something that really bugs me about maybe a certain relationship that's that you can't get out of, <laughs> whether a marriage relationship, maybe a family relationship, and you're thinking, man, I'd just like to walk away from this. But that's the things you have to deal with. That's the things that make you powerful or make you powerless. And of course, we all want to be powerful. So I've, I'm finding that once I identify my fault in things, then things get a little bit more clear. And it doesn't mean that I just lay back and say, well, you know, it was all my fault. And if I would have just been perfect, this wouldn't have happened. It actually allows me the freedom to say, okay, here's what my fault was in it. Now, here's where I think you could have done something better. Like, <laughs> that's another level to get to in a relationship where you don't just lay down and say, this was all my fault, but you acknowledge your part in it, but you also almost hold them accountable for their part in it. And some people will be held accountable and they'll respond to that, and some people will not. And I think the trick is learning all your different relationships. How deep can you go? How honest can you get? I was just in a Bible study this morning with Beth Moore. Actually, Beth Moore was not there. (laughs) We were listening to a video. (laughs) But she talked about this. So she was doing the different levels of our relationships. And so, of course, the first level is the world and how we send a message to the world. And then she gave the number 72, which meant a gathering, maybe a church gathering, how the people you're with are people you see every Sunday and they're gathered with you. And then there's the 12, like the 12 disciples, and how that relationship is close and how you are able to share things. But then she, she gave the three, and Jesus had the three, and how he was able to be vulnerable and talked about friendships having friendships that you're actually able to say to them your true feelings or even not to reprimand them or anything but just to be able to tell them really how you feel about maybe something they did something they said and how often does this happen I'm going to say probably not too often but we do need friends like that who are able to speak the truth in love and that's very hard to do I think becoming powerful is able to maintain relationships and be honest. And not just be honest to them, but have them be able to be honest with you and still say, well, then I'm writing her off. But that's what a real personal, vulnerable relationship is. And of course, the last one was number one. That's our relationship uh, with Christ and the intimacy we have with Christ. Let's talk a little bit about truly powerful people some of the characteristics of them and I do like this because it's so true and and something we didn't say about powerless people is powerless people they may seem like they're backing off from you but actually they can be very very controlling either in a very aggressive way or a very passive way but they still control you and that's kind of scary when you think about it so let's talk about powerful people and Powerful people do not try to control other people. You know, they know it doesn't work, and it's not their job, and their job is to really only control themselves, which is something you mentioned a little earlier. Another trait of a powerless, of a powerful person is that they refuse to be victims of others. Wow, so they've established clear boundaries. A powerful person's choice to love will stand no matter what the other person does. Powerful people can be who they say they are on a consistent basis, which is interesting to me because actions do speak louder than words. We can spout off, we're this, we're this, we the love, you know, we love everybody, blah, blah, blah. But do we really? To, to be powerful is to let go of all those things in our hearts that we maybe think of other people, for the most part, are probably not true. But to become powerful enough to love them through it. And I think that's very important. But for us to stay on an even keel of who we really are. I have been around people who are just plain old scary at times. And you think, oh my gosh, where did that come from? 
I'm that's why it was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll ask Dave. I've had that same thought about myself. Where did that come from? Exactly. <laughs> so to become powerful, I think we just need to say the main thing I think is you only have control of yourself. We cannot control other people. We can try to. Mothers are great at doing <laughs> controlling other people. I know I've done it and probably still do. But to be truly powerful, we have to let people learn on their own, do their own thing, and not manipulation. Manipulation is truly a very negative thing. To try to manipulate people is not a good thing. It's It's a bad thing. And so... To be powerful, you're not going to try to change people's minds. You're not going to, you might influence them, but you just need them to find out for themselves. So how do we become powerful? What's one other way? And that's through repentance, really. Because we as people, we're powerless. You know, when you think of Christ coming in all his power to save us, he had to save us from being powerless. And so he wants us to work on this. He wants us to become powerful loving people who can spread his word. And if we are always feeling sorry for ourselves, if we're always blaming other people, if we're doing this, if we're doing it, we cannot spread the gospel. I think it's impossible. So he's saying repent. And so that's what we need to do. And just say, you know, God, I feel powerless. I'm a powerless person. Help me, Lord God. I just pray that you will just give me the strength to become powerful so that I can do your work. There's some things that we, you could ponder uh, about what we talked about today. And some of these, one, one thing is you have to find out, am I a powerful person or am I a powerless person? And maybe every day, you, like you said, are you, can you be both? Absolutely, you can be both. And say, God, what is it I do that makes me powerless and help me to overcome? Another thing you can ponder is, what are your responsibilities as it relates to your relationships? Stop looking at the other person and just say, what is my responsibility here in this relationship? And have an open discussion with that person, with your spouse or with that person. Again, I think it goes back to how how deeply do you trust that person? How How strong is your relationship with that person? Can it handle that kind of honesty? This isn't one that was in the book, but it's one that that I've connected with a lot um, from, I've mentioned this motivational speaker. I've referred to him before, Jim Rohn. He just always says, love the other person by loving yourself and taking good care of yourself. Actually, I think more what he said is, I will love you by loving me. And I really liked that. That there is a sense where we can't become powerful with other people until we really love ourselves and deal with some of that under the surface fear and anxiety. And the last thing to ponder, which is really good, is is prayer. A lot of prayer. Pray together with your friend, your spouse, for wisdom and pray that God will help you both become the powerful people you can be. to fly I'm letting go